So I was having a conversation with Zach Dennis a while back, and we were talking about testing and refactoring, and he said, you know, there's a third leg to the stool, and that's design. Much has been said in the Ruby community about the importance of testing, the power of refactoring to improve design, and the importance of understanding software design itself. But as Michael Feathers pointed out in the deep synergy between testability and good design, they are most powerful, probably only really understandable when treated as a team, or in Zach's terms, the three legs of the stool. I enjoy teaching Ruby and most of my students are relatively new to the language. The center of our curriculum is the seven degrees of fizz buzz. We squeeze every last drop of knowledge out of it in order to introduce ourselves to the language, to pair programming, and to thinking like programmers. The challenge is very simple. You output a set of numbers, say 1 to 15. If a number is divisible by 3, you output fizz instead. If it's divisible by 5, you output buzz, and if it's divisible by 3 and 5, you output fizz buzz. So let's examine the testing section of that exercise through the lens of Zach's three-legged stool. But in the interest of the beginners among us, we're going to use only one example of each. For testing, the unit test. For refactoring, extract method. And for design, the principle of composition. So here's the first version of FizzBuzz that we're going to use. Hack together in a white heat and without a thought for tomorrow. Beautiful, isn't it? Clear, elegant, assuming you understand syntax details like ranges, mapping, and how the join operator affects an array, and fairly concise. It's even got a bit of the first leg of our stool, composition. Composition means assembling something out of component parts. An engine is composed of gears, belts, pistons, etc. These pieces work together to convert gasoline and a bit of electricity into motive power. The base level of composition in computer programs is the method, and we have one here, FizzBuzz. It takes an argument of the upper bound of our range and returns a set of values for the caller to do things with. Breaking a problem into small components allows us to think about each one individually, which is generally easier than thinking of the whole construction at once. We're fine as long as the pieces plug together. Piece A generates something that piece B needs in the correct format, which means we can create, test, and debug each part by itself and put them together when we're confident they work in isolation. Now that we've written our neat little FizzBuzz method, we can add it to any application that needs FizzBuzzing. There's only one problem. The code is wrong. Run it and we get this. Which brings us to our second leg, testing. Testing means exercising program code in order to prove it functions as expected in all the important ways it might be used or abused. To do this, we employ a test framework which offers a variety of ways to say, under these conditions, this method should behave this way. The most basic sort of testing is unit testing, which typically exercises a single method. So how might we write a test for this method? Using RSpec, the most popular Ruby test framework, we could do this. And if we run it, we have proven that the code is misbehaving. So, yeah, we're testing. But, yuck. First off, it's hideously long, as is the error output. We're forced to visually match every single value in both arrays to find out what's wrong. There's also a bunch of repetition. We test whether the fizz logic works eight times. But it's a test. When it succeeds, we know the code's right, and that's perfectly valid, but we can do better. And we need to do better. Because writing tests like that all day long is one of the reasons people give up testing. It's exhausting. After a few minutes of looking, we realized that we forgot the is equal to zero after each conditional. Notice that the test itself doesn't help us at all in this search. It just sits there being broken. So we fix our code and run it again. Hmm. Clearly we fixed something, but not everything. Even through all that noise, we can see those nils poking out. 
Ah, we forgot our else case. So we change the code again and run it again. And this brings us to the second reason that people give up on testing. We have a bug in our test. After monkey walking through the outputs in parallel, we see that although 15 should appear as fizzbuzz, I accidentally typed buzz because it was divisible by 5. We fix that, and now our test passes. But there is nothing more infuriating than writing a piece of code in five minutes and then spending two hours beating your head against a testing framework trying to prove you were right all along. This is why your test should be as simple as possible, because you can't wrap tests around your tests. Here's the test I would like to write to prove our FizzBuzz algorithm works. In fact, if I'd been doing test-driven development, I probably would have started here and saved myself a lot of hair pulling. Live and learn. The dream test proves the algorithm works correctly in each of its four states without all the repetition and noise. It was a lot easier to write correctly the first time, and the output is more readable. Only one problem. We can't run this code because the fizzbuzz a number method doesn't exist. It doesn't exist because the fizzbuzz method actually doesn't have enough composition. It's doing two distinct things. It's iterating over an array, and the conditionals are doing the actual fizz buzzing. So how do we improve the composition of our method and get to run our dream test? We refactor. Refactoring means improving the structure of code without changing its external behavior. We typically refactor for one of two reasons. To improve the clarity of the code and make it easier to think about, or to make it easier to add a feature. If it's hard to add a feature to your code base, try refactoring your existing code into something that makes the feature easier to implement. Now that we have a test covering FizzBuzz, we can be confident our changes won't break logic that was working when we started. The feature we want to implement is being able to use our awesome new test, so we'll refactor to make it possible, using one of the most common refactorings, Extract Method. Martin Fowler's book, Refactoring, with examples in Java, though there's now a Ruby version, introduce the disciplined, meticulous approach to changing code, so even this simple one has several steps. First, we create a new method, and then copy the code we want to extract into it. Second, we find variables that are created outside, but used inside our new method, and we add them as args. Third, we find variables created or modified inside our new method, but used outside, and we set those as return values. Fourth, we test our new method in isolation. Fifth, we replace the original code with a call to our new code. And six, our new and our old tests should still pass. So let's go through it. First, we copy the relevant bit of code into a new method with an intention-revealing name. Good variable and method names go a long way toward making code self-commenting. Next, we look for variables created outside our new method, but used inside it. We have only one, n. We can get it into the method by adding it as an argument. We then look for any variables modified or created inside this method, but used outside it. In this case, the only one is the implicit return value, and that takes care of itself. Now we can run our dream test, and it passes right away. Naturally, the original test still passes because we haven't touched FizzBuzz yet. If we decided at this point to abandon the effort, we could delete our new method, and everything would be as it was. No harm, no foul. But we like our new code, so we complete the refactoring by replacing the original instance of the code with a call to the new method, passing along the argument. The tests still pass, and all is right with the world. So big deal, we now have two tests that prove the same thing, until we reintroduce one of our bugs by accidentally removing one of the is equal to zero. And rerun our tests. Notice the difference? 
The more specific test shines a spotlight on the code that's failing. We gave it a 9 and got FizzBuzz, making it a simple matter to find and fix the problem. The original one still gives me scroll blindness and is not pulling its diagnostic weight, so I delete it with relief. There are still tests left to write. See the original 7 Degrees of FizzBuzz post for examples, but we've made huge strides toward improving this code and its tests. So do you see how the three legs collaborate to hold up the stool? We can't prove our program works without tests, but we can't write high quality tests unless we design for testability. We can't design for testability without understanding basic design concepts and knowing how to refactor to them. All this gives us the tools we need to turn the first draft version we hacked together to hit a deadline into code we can live with for the long haul. But don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself.